Getting started on hiking to Bomber Peak at about 6.30 in the morning. Dun, 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 dun. Maybe 6.30, yeah, there we go. It's a little bit chilly, it's probably 38 degrees here, about four degrees Celsius. The water didn't freeze, so that was good. I'm starting out in the parking lot here. Yeah, no big deal, one of the nice things is there's a pit toilet there so you can take care of business before you head out. Uh, one of the nice things about camping at this altitude, 9,300 feet or, I don't know, just over 3,000 meters, is that you get acclimated so when you head out on this trail, you're not completely dying, but you still will feel it at this altitude. So definitely be mindful of that. And if you don't feel good, just uh, back down, it's okay. West Ten Sleep Lake is just over there. So if you want a gentle hike around with basically zero elevation gain except for getting to and from the parking lot, that's it. So I'm going to head out and hopefully find a little pouch for a wilderness permit and head on. So you just fill this out, stuff it in the slot, keep the other copy with you because they can check it, the rangers, and that's it. There's an old school water pump right before the trail and otherwise you head into the wilderness. There's a creek crossing you gotta do over there. There's a trail pole. Walk up about 150 feet or 30 meters. And there's some hoppable rocks. There's some more hoppable rocks over there. And then you go back and reconnect. Otherwise the crossing you're gonna end up wet. And in about 35 minutes you reach the Cloud Peak Wilderness border. Mosquitoes. <laughs> the mosquito landed on the camera. The mosquito is literally right here. Oof. After the first 75 minutes, things are going pretty well. The elevation gain is very moderate all the way to Misty Moon Lake. From here to Misty Moon, maybe another 500 feet or about 170 meter uh, gain for the distance. So, so far so good, not too bad. Uh, but definitely when I go uphill, I feel it being this high. Woo! <laughs> Ah, and after a while, I get to Lake Helen, this beautiful high mountain lake. It's definitely worth a visit. You can see my destination way back there, Bomber Peak. This lake is deep. Woo! Starts here and just goes straight down. Break number two. I'm at Lake Helen or Helen Lake. Beautiful location. That's somewhere behind me here. Yeah, there it is. Sweet! Pretty nice. Now, why am I sitting? On this bridge, well, I'm just about to cross into the 10,000 foot realm, which is where the tree line is. And this is at my 75 minute mark, but it's one of the only shady spots remaining on the trail. Pretty much from here, once I go around the hill, the trees are going to get thinner and thinner to the point where I'm just going to be cooking. So I've got my hat and I'm gonna have to put my sun hoodie on probably, I don't wanna get burned. So far, I haven't sweated off all my sunscreen and bug juice yet, but that time is coming. Didn't take uh, 15 minutes from near the end of Lake Helen to come to Lake Marion.
Sweet. High altitude fish, 10,000 feet. As you come across the view from Lake Helen, and you come over here, you'll see a rough trail that goes up. And that is one way to get there. But this is the direction towards Misty Moon and heading towards uh, a little solitude and all that to where I'm going to make my jump in Lake Florence. So Camping in Misty Moon Lake is very popular. Misty Moon Lake at 10.30, so four hours to get to Misty Moon. Not bad. The first lake you happen to be run upon is Fortress Lakes. Uh, as you come to the middle of Fortress Lakes, you'll see this little slope. And here is the other lake, part of the fortress. And if you look around here, it definitely looks like a fortress. Very secured. Still got a ways to go. Another lake, and then around the corner, and Lake Florence. So, gotta keep on cooking. It's almost break time, three minutes. Woo! That's the challenge up here. No trees for shade. And when you just get past the third fortress lake, you can uh, stop by and check out Gunboat Lake. Maybe this is a gunboat, who knows. It's cloth all over the place, is interesting. Maybe from a trail repair some years ago. Lake Florence at noon. Bomber Mountain right there. Ah, finally made Lake Florence. Bomber Mountain, just right there. I have to go across that waterfall and uh, supposedly there's a path and trail up there. It looks pretty steep, so we'll, uh, we'll see what happens. Lake Florence, here we go. Beautiful. Bomber Mountain's up there. The plane parts are supposed to be in the saddle. Apparently the directions say go to the southeast end of the lake. There's supposed to be a plaque there. And then begin following the cairns, wherever the heck they are, to get up. Maybe climb up that way. I don't know. I'll figure it out. And then in theory, you're supposed to go above this dark mass of rock. My finger's blurring it out. Apparently this is the easiest route above here, over to there. It's only three quarters of a mile, but it's quite a climb. I don't, uh, I don't know what it'll be like. Here's a memorial plaque to the men that lost their lives, Lieutenant, Sergeant. On or about June 28th, 1943. They crashed right up there. So see where I am. When you cross the creek, I crossed too early. I was thinking those bigger rocks cross over here. A couple guys that I ran into said they were catching 16 to 22 inch cutthroat in Lake Florence. Finding the way back is a challenge. If you're tempted to go down the creek, you want to cross the creek in the wide field, hop over, head for the pyramid. That'll put you in the chute, otherwise that'll put you into two vertical rock.
The climb above the huge dark gray band from the lake looks like you're on a cliff, but when you get here, it's just a real steep trail. It took me 55 minutes from the lake to find the first piece of debris. This is the, part of the outer body of the aircraft here. Apparently the debris is spread over several hundred yards. I'm going to try and find the fuselage. The clouds are already coming in, so we've got to be careful once the thunder comes. Ooh, got to get out of here because there's zero shelter here. But this is the first piece. Spectacular view of the Bighorns in Cloud Peak Wilderness. Looking way north here. Turning around. The lake is totally invisible. Lake Florence, but my route's back there. It's uh, been a bit of a haul. I left that piece there. But I see another piece up here. Debris too. Never assume a big rock is stable. One of the main debris fields. Stuff all over the place there. Wheel. It's amazing all the different things. Motor parts and gears and pumps. Cowlings and fairings. Oh, part of an engine. You can see the cooling fins here. Down here too. Oh yeah. Oof, wow. I am going to skip the summit. It is another 0.6 miles of endless rock scrambling, or about a kilometer, uh, and it's already whew, quarter to three, oh, 245. It's a long ways back. Yeah. It'll take me to do that, probably an hour, and then an hour to get back, an hour to get down. Nope, so, oh well. Another engine, or at least what's left of it. The main debris field. Cylinder's gone. Wow. Just got crushed. Like no, nothing. This thing's heavy. Whew. See cylinders and pistons and the metal was just shredded. This heavy, heavy chunk just like destroyed. Ooh. Oops, almost pricked myself. To the men who lost their lives in this airplane crash, fighting in World War II. Sorry, I can't really hold the flag properly. Hey, uh, thank you very much for uh, making your sacrifice so that this country and the United States might be free. It's a super tragedy and thank you to all the service people who gave everything in World War II. 51 minutes down, whew, boy. But uh, not much faster than going up, funny thing. Yeah, Florence Pass at just the four o'clock. Well, I got a long ways to go. I'm probably going to be in the dark. That stinks. <laughs> I'm just about out of food and just about out of water. I have a hot chocolate packet left. A handful of peanuts and three cookies, and that's it. So I've been rolling for 12 hours. I calculate all the calories. I'm down to probably a um, three quarter liter of water. And I still have at least five miles to go. Woo! <laughs> but at least it's beautiful and the sun's just finally falling behind the ridge. So I'm gonna hit a little bit of sun over there so I gotta keep my hat out. The mosquitoes are starting to detect me, but I don't want to put the lotion on because then I stink and I'm dirty. This thing smells terrible. Uh, all of my breakpoints were 75 minute 
jaunts and that includes everything when I stop for a drink or mess with a snack or change a layer. So that uh, gives me a good idea. 75 minutes seems longer, but it allows me to cover more ground. Sweet! All right. Oh boy. Yeah, like, wow, within 10 minutes of 14 hours. So, yeah, 13 hours and 50 minutes. Ho oh, oh. ho! Uh, so, the hike to uh, Bomber Peak, checking out the plane wreck and everything. Uh, at least 22 miles, but I probably did 24 wandering around the summit or the, the peak area, finding different wreckage. It's Drew over a quarter mile easy, and I didn't even find everything. Wow. That was a spectacular hike. I definitely wouldn't want to do it any later in the year. It's mid-August now, because I started in dusky conditions, and even though it doesn't look like in the camera, it is dusky. It's not dark, but it's pretty dark. That was a great hike. Uh, I went through an entire bag of food, two extra tuna kits, I'll have to add it up. It's a huge amount of food that I ate and drank. Took with me three and a half liters. And I literally have this much left and I am thirsty. Thank goodness for Gatorade. Oh, what an adventure. Uh, it definitely would be easier and allow for more time for fishing at uh, Lake Florence. Big old cutthroat trout and Several hours of exploring the summit so you don't have to murder yourself in a single day. Uh, oh, that was fun. It was a good time. Highly recommended. Uh, if you do it as a day hike, you got to be ready and tough. Because, woo, boy, and uh, bring a headlamp just in case. My name is Aaron Lindstow. I'm a polar explorer and professional adventurer. Please check out links below in the description to my books, Antarctic Tears, Lost at Winnie Corner, Adventure Expedition 1. How to Keep Your Feet Warm in the Cold, The Jackson Hole Hiking Guide, 50 Jackson Hole Photography Hotspots, The Most Crucial Knots to Know, and my 2024 Total Eclipse Guides, as well as my show, Antarctic Tears. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe to the channel to get more adventure ideas like this.